Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Brianna here, and I have a little video for you guys. First of all, excuse the the whole thing that's going on with the face, you know, with this whole quarantine thing. Not really able to leave the house. I look like I just returned from a jungle, um, but we're going to try to power through and get on with this. So today I have a video for you guys, uh, specifically about what is dependency injection. Um, Constructor will go over dependency injection and version of control in Spring Boot Framework as well as we'll talk about constructor injection versus setter injection and also touch briefly on field injection all right so to get started before we really go into anything we have to understand what exactly is this inversion of control thing right so inversion of control basically like it says inverts control of the system uh this basically means that execution is not tied to one specific piece of code so components are not responsible for handling the creation of the dependency which they need. So if class A requires class B to work, we don't need to go into some method and say, you know, new class A and put class B as uh, something that we put into it in its constructor or something. The benefits for this first is loose coupling. We can put in and take out pieces. Uh, let's say we want to replace class B with something else, maybe something that extends class B. We don't need to use that class B anymore. And then enhanced testability, basically using mocking frameworks and stuff, we can take advantage of mocking up those dependencies and injecting them into our tests. So before we get into this whole IOC thing and talking about all these different types of injection and all that, let's talk about how would we handle this right now in normal Java code uh, without Spring, without anything. So let's go jump into it. Right. Right. So how would we do this in an application that doesn't have spring, that doesn't have dependency injection, that doesn't really have any of that stuff. So the first thing that we're gonna think about is we're gonna have a class A, and that class B A will contain another class, class B. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make the classes class A, and we'll make the classes class B. So without dependency injection, we're gonna have to say that, so class A will have a private class B of class B. So to use class B, we'll have to have a constructor. So generate constructor here. And basically class A is responsible for, we'll have it instead of being like that, we'll have it um, class B equals new class B. Okay. And then, uh, Class B, we won't really put anything in here, right? Um, yeah, okay, that's fine. So class A now contains class B. So for me to go and use class A in my main at any time, right? I would have to either create class A, right? So class A, class A equals new class A, right? And then if I was either passing class B into it, I'd have to do it myself. But since class A is making class B in its constructor, there's nothing extra we have to do. So that's one way of doing it, right? We can see where we kind of run into problems here. Um, either if we were passing in class B or uh, even if we're not and we're just making it in the constructor, it's not a great idea to be doing this. It's not a great idea to really be um, taking basically the driver's seat of creating these things. Uh, if we have any changes in class B or if we really need to test class B and maybe test something with class A and its interaction with class B, we wouldn't be able to do that. So the next question is kind of how can we achieve this using dependency injection? Right. And also, what the heck is this dependency injection thing? Right. So dependency injection is basically just a pattern which implements inversion of control. Right. So Springs frameworks inversion of control. It'll create the objects. It'll wire them together, configure and manage the complete life cycle, and it'll handle it from completion till destruction. The control in this case obviously is being inverted in the creation of dependencies, which are objection, which our objects will use. So if you can see here, we have this class A, 
Class A is in the spring IOC container, and Class A's dependencies is put into that container as well. Um, the Class A dependencies will be put into Class A, and then a final object, which is ready to use, will be given to us. So, okay, it's a lot of words. What does it really mean, and how are we going to do it? So there's really three types of dependency injection. One that's generally frowned upon, which is considered field injection, and two that are used heavily, constructor-based injection as well as setter-based injection. So the first one is constructor-based injection. What constructor-based injection does is it ensures that the dependency is present. Um, since we're doing it into the constructor, the object will fail and not actually create if for some reason that bean isn't there, which we're going to inject into it. With this, you can have issues where one, if you're injecting way too many things into your object, um, you can have a very long constructor. Uh, but that's generally a good idea of thinking, okay, maybe this one class is doing way too many things and maybe some sort of code bloat. Or we can run into circular dependency issues. So if A requires B and maybe B requires C, which has something to do with A or any, any really convolution in that way, which again is really a idea of bad design, but you can have an issue where A is not able to spin up because it's waiting for B to spin up and B is not spinning up yet because it's waiting on something else to spin up. And you kind of go into the cyclical dependency. And the last benefit of constructor-based injection, um, or at least that we'll be covering in this video, is that we can create immutable classes. So with uh, constructor-based injection, you can have your objects or your dependencies being final and not changing after injection. And the next one is setter-based injection. Setter-based injection is used mostly for optional dependencies because you're not really ensuring that dependencies is going to be present. Lastly, field injection. Um, the overall decision in the community is there's very little circumstances where this should be used and it relies heavily on reflection. So you're actually reflecting on the objects and specifically injecting the value into that field. But simply put, constructor Injection is used when the class cannot function without the dependent class, and property injection is used when the class can function without the dependent class. So basically to go over it before we jump into the code and show you guys, uh, for mandatory dependencies or when aiming for immutability, we're gonna use constructor injection. For optional or changeable dependencies, we're gonna use setter injection. And in most cases, we're gonna avoid field injection. So let's jump into the code. And let's write this up. When using dependency injection in Spring Boot, we want to make sure that our object is, or our bean, is one of the Spring like bean types, right? So you have component, you have service, you have controller, and you have repository. Um, to quickly go over them, repositories deal with uh, talking to the database or dealing with the database. It's an abstraction of that. Uh, your services are generally where your business logics will go. Your controllers are your front end rest controllers and components is just kind of all of those are considered components, but the most basic level of a bean, you can consider it a component. So for this, we'll just use component. So we'll say that these are both considered components, both class A and class B. Okay, so to go over the first one, we can go over um, constructor injection. So just like we had before, we have class B, right? Class B. And then all we have to do is we just have to generate a constructor. And Spring will automatically auto wire this for us. Um, you used to have to put the at auto wired here, but now you don't need to do that anymore. It'll just understand because it's a component and class B is also a component. So, and then here in class B, we'll just have some method and we'll say, um, uh, So we'll have a method howdy, and in here we'll just system that out. Print a one howdy. So <clears throat> uh, 
Now to go over this, let's do, for this, let's go ahead and just have something using post construct. That just means that we are gonna have some method that's gonna run once this object runs. Um, has nothing specifically to do with uh, dependency injection or inversion of control specifically. It just means, okay, once this constructor runs, we're gonna run something. So we're gonna just say, um, Right, and we'll just say class B dot howdy. Okay. So when we run this application now, we see that howdy runs, right? So that's the first way, right? We have our constructor based injection. And now if we remove component from here, and this is no longer bean, we can see that this is going to fail. Because, like I said with constructor injection, uh, if the object that we are, we're requiring isn't there, the whole thing will fail. And as this application is dependent on class B being there, that's why we would do it that way. But let's, let's change it up, right? Now that we have constructor injection done, let's move on to setter injection. So we're gonna remove this constructor and we're gonna create a getter and setter for class B. Now on the setter, we'll have to specify the at auto wired annotation. And that basically tells Spring that we wanna use dependency injection on the setter to give us this class B. And here what we'll do is if class B is equal to null, we're gonna print class B is null. And if not, we'll go ahead and and print out our howdy situation here. So if I go ahead and rerun this, we can see that the howdy shows up. And if I go ahead and remove this component, which means this object is no longer bean, we're going to see that instead we're gonna get this error, which is the same as we had in constructor injection. But the only thing that we can do with this auto wired is that we can set now the required equals false. So if we run this again, we're gonna see our class B is null because it was never injected. And obviously, if we go ahead and annotate this again with component, it'll show up, howdy. And the last example, which again, like I said, is not very, really recommended, but I wanna show you guys just so we know, is that we can put at auto wired right on here. So now that at auto wired is right on there, we can use field injection and it'll work in the same way. And we're getting our howdy. Obviously that's without constructor, constructor or setter based injection turned on. So kind of going over everything one last time. Constructor injection would be for mandatory immutable based objects, right? Um, for setter injection is mostly our optional or changeable dependencies and Field injection is useful in some cases, relies heavily on reflection, and generally we would want to avoid it. Anyway guys, thanks for watching my video. If you guys made it this far, can you go ahead and drop me a like down below, give me a subscribe and, a and turn on that notification bell so you get videos the next time I post. Thank you so much for watching my video. I appreciate it, and have a great day guys.